Hello to all my friends out there. So it's very, very hot here and the fires are still burning. So I think I made a mistake. In one of my videos, I said Michelle Obama was the best, highest educated first lady. I don't think that is maybe correct. I think maybe it was Hillary, not sure. Hillary Clinton. And I thought, wow, you know how quickly we forget. So, this video is how about um, creating a co-op. So what I have been doing, and if you guys have watched me, you have seen it, is I have been uh, brainstorming all kinds of brilliant ideas. Some of them not so brilliant, but still. Okay, I looked up the exact meaning to make sure I knew the exact meaning. A cooperative is an autonomous association. That means it's entirely amongst the members of persons united voluntarily to meet a common economic, social, cultural needs and aspiration through a jointly owned enterprise. So, um, how I brainstorm this up is I knew of like three different ones. Okay, you guys may have seen the videos of very people who are very young and they wanted to retire so that they could travel and really um, work unimpeded by life. A lot of them are minimalists and, um, you know, they're just like really cheap and they have created these groups and, and the groups promote this lifestyle and that's what they all have in common and they meet and and that's their co-op the other one i knew was um this lady and she would buy up things with coupons and then she had a group of ladies and and they would buy her stuff you know and she would make a little money and she had a lot like she had like a little store and then the other one i knew was when I worked in the um, Mexican shops, they had a woman and she was called a Codina. And she would collect $25 a week. And then uh, I think it was once a year, one person would get the money. So it would be a pretty big amount of money. And she would come to the, sh uh, the shop, maybe it was once a month. For every month, somehow they got the money. And then, so there was 11 members, and so for the 12th month, she got the money for collecting the money. And the money was not that easy to collect sometimes. <laughs> so then, I started thinking of ideas because maybe these cooperative units are gonna make um, survival a whole lot easier. And a lot of people are like co-ops in their family, but if you could create, a lot of the preppers have like co-op um, associations, you know, that provide protection, guarding the food, stuff like that. And then they all have their input into the prepping as well. And you can uh, join these co-ops for a small fee. And I, and I would assume that the person who, who creates the co-op is like the Codina who gets the money. Okay, so this one lady, what she would do is she would buy all this stuff. Like when you get good at the coupons, like buy one, get one free. Even if you sell and you buy it cheap with a coupon. And she was making actually a pretty good uh, living and they invited me to go. And also, I've had invitations with ladies who knew the coupons very, very well to teach me the coupons if I paid them $50. So that's an idea, too. So um, it could be more communal where everybody was like a participant. Everybody prospered to the same. So what it could be is like uh, members of this created group could buy things like dented cans cheap, damaged packages, drastically reduced items, 
buy things with coupons, buy large quantities of food, and like, you know, you've probably seen those 25 pound bags of, um, of potatoes, like by the big bags, and then split those up amongst the members of the co-op. Um, fruit, uh, large quantities, if people grew them, members of the co-op, vegetables, big bags of potatoes, big bags of onions. So that way, you know, you could, if everyone participated in this group, a lot of people do this with families. So number one, it would have to be trustworthy people that you can trust like your merchandise. So you would acquire huge amounts of, of stock because say if you had uh, four members and everybody was uh, buying the dented cans and then you brought them, or if you had like a responsibility of so many dollars and then you could shop within that by bringing something of a similar value that you had and taking something that you wanted. Um, all of the friends, all of the um, members could try to collect cans. All of the um, members could try to secure resources like from thrift stores, yard sales, and then they could all sell these items at say a swap meet and share in the proceeds. You know, church, um, church, uh, what are those things? Bazaars seem to do very well. I have been buying the, I've been wearing the shirts that I bought for the cruise because pretty soon I'm going to sell them for three bucks. Another thing that could be done amongst the community or the co-op is if you see things so, uh, curbside that somebody might need like this TV tray or those little tables or, you know, or, you know, items like you're done with the bunk beds and you would share your resources amongst the co-op so that everybody would prosper. Uh, you could uh, also chip in $5 per um, member per week and that could be used to buy resources or you could also disperse the resources between each person so, you know, if there was four people, $20 a week each month, someone in the group would get 80. So every four months that would cycle. Depends how many people you have. So, um, you could also do it so that when you, uh, you were shopping in your co-op store, you could do it by numbers of items or you could do it by uh, dollar amounts that it was all, um, it was all um, agreed upon uh, what the exchange would be amongst the co-op. Uh, in these groups where they're, um, you know, already saved up all their money and they're retired, they have meetings and they discuss, um, they discuss like investments and things like that. Another thing that could be done amongst the members is farms could be created so each home would have like a garden and then the food would go into like a storehouse or a warehouse and then the families could live out of the warehouse and so that would be great also they could create free day daycare in the group so that the women could work outside of the home another thing they could do is they could if there was like four families work on one home per week so everyone would go over and do all the yard work all the housework all the laundry once a week and so there would be four families on one house and so then you wouldn't have to pay for those services and your houses would get nice and tight um, a couple times I bought houses and what I did was I just worked and salons I worked on them usually on a Monday and I would clean them and that general maintenance every week really works wonders. And if you had four families doing it, it would be um, easy. You have to find the right people. Another thing that could happen that would be really good 
is you would have four families all providing protection for each other. Also, big animals and dogs could be bred and shared amongst the families, and that would be a really great idea, too. Um, the children can do a lot of work. You know, my son, uh, he was in about eighth grade, and he started managing all of our money. <laughs> he just had a knack for it. Uh, when he was a little kid, we used to play games, and, and we used to love to play Monopoly, and we wouldn't let him win. Well, pretty soon, it got to the point where we couldn't win. Um, another thing is, since, you know, we can't go out that much, um, amongst these families, you can have picnics and potlucks, which are pleasant, in the nice, clean yards that everybody pro provided for each other. So what we could do is like um, in our country, we've always been individualists, but we might want to move to a more cooperative um, situation because that might be more beneficial. And it's also better for children because of the disruption in school. So they grow better in small communities like animals, you know. Okay, another thing that could be done among the four uh, families is meals could be exchanged and so you would only be cooking every other day because one of the other families would be cooking and you know you could do some kind of uh, of exchange because we can't eat out that much um another thing is the resources of the families that you okay you have resources that you don't want anymore those would go to those four families first um, the ones I thought of were bicycles. I just got rid of a bicycle. Fans. I found several fans um, out by the dumpster and I gave them away. Cars no longer needed and furniture. Another thing that could happen is you could stockpile fruit. Also though you could provide trees for each family. Um, I bought my son a pomegranate tree and I'll be buying him more trees, and this could happen amongst the families as well. And then, you know, if you have really good dogs, uh, good dogs are expensive, but if the dogs have puppies, you could share the dogs to guard the houses. Also, um, I was going to the Adventist church, and one of the members just happened to do the work, and he built wrought iron uh, fences around the church, which made it a lot more secure. Um, and another thing is, amongst the members, there could be exchanges on how to be super thrifty. Also, they could provide services like um, car repair, uh, you know, appliance repair. Uh, one of my friend's fathers, he, he could fix anything. Another thing is everyone could get together and make casseroles on one day of the week. You know, like how many hands make light work and create uh, meals that could be stockpiled in the freezer. Uh, like tamales, pies, bread, uh, dehydration. You know, they could get together and uh, chop up food, fruit for dehydration. And I freeze fresh fruit. So if someone got the fresh fruit and everybody had fruit in the freezer, that would be really good. And everybody had baby food and formula for the babies. One could make yogurt, one could make bread in large, beef, large batches of beef, like um, in the pot, in the crock pots, and then I had frozen fruit. Okay, and, and in and amongst the group, there could be quilting and crocheting, and that is really nice to have. And when you have four people, it goes pretty, four, five, six people, it goes fast. Of uh, Quilting, crocheting, and thrifting, um, which could be sold or used um, communally. Not like a cute commune, more like a, a co-op. I think that's a healthier approach anyway. Um, also, um, from this fruit and vegetables and stuff grown, that could be sold as well. And then the families could um, share in the, in the proceeds. I think it's going to be wise to move in this direction in the future, you guys. 
so the families would help each other clean all the houses cars clothes food storage large amounts so there would be huge stockpiles of food acquired amongst four people and one way this could happen is everybody in the co-op goes to the food bank the food pantries uh, the churches and if they qualify they get EBT and they put that food in the storehouse for a rainy day and also one thing that they could do is acquire containers like uh, mason jars uh, trash cans metal ones are expensive a uh, large plastic boxes for storage like to keep baby clothes in and uh, also each house could be furnished with either a fireplace or a wood burning um, stove. Okay, and then amongst the older sons and the husbands, they could provide moving and hauling, and that goes about $300 a day and split the money. Um, also, they could go in and, and buy a house that would create rental money between four of them and then split the expenses and the, um, and the proceeds. So they could go to swap meets and bazaars to acquire needed items, but also to find items to barter. And another thing is in these dwellings, there could be created spaces in living spaces in a garage or some kind of apartment um, my sister had a house one time my sister had this huge house and it was actually split in two with a kitchen in the middle but out back was like a big area that could have been converted into an apartment so when buying houses you could look into something like that like houses that have strange like big rooms and convert garages into apartments to create extra income also um, they could work together to acquire trailers that could be rented and kept on the property like if someone's mother-in-law lived in the, the trailer then you know that would create more common money for the whole family or even in trailers out here we have California rooms and those could be converted into uh, rooms and then amongst these um, co-ops there could be barbecues and parties um, you know once a week twice a month and so what it is is it's like taking control of your life out of society and creating groups and say well this is the way we're going to live Each family tries to come up with one good new dinner recipe for months, for each month. So you would have four nice recipes, like um, this week I got some good Rachel Ray cookbooks for you. Okay, and I came up with a good recipe and then we'll just end this one here. Okay, I cooked white rice and then I removed the water that was now rice milk and I saved it. I had vanilla coffee creamer and I mixed one cup warm water with a one third cup coffee creamer and I added that to the cooked rice with cinnamon and it was very delicious cold or hot. So if I was in one of these co-ops that would be my recipe for the um, month and then the next month I would try to come up with a rice milk recipe. And I have a couple. I have one uh, rice milk recipe, and I'll give it to you since we're on the subject. Okay, all you need is a can of peas. And today, peas and rice is one of the most... I bought this at Walmart for 38 cents. Nutritious combinations. So you cook your uh, peas, and you add salt, pepper, sugar, and onions. Then you grind your peas in the blender and you force them through a metal wire sieve. You don't have to, but I do. And then you make white gravy, which is margarine, 
flour and you you cook the flour and you start adding rice milk little by little and then you add the peas to the rice milk and that is a delicious um, pea soup. Oh look, I came up with two recipes for my co-op. Okay you guys, if you have any great ideas, if you're like brainstorming, um, you know what would be really great if we created our own little co-op of ideas and, and the, the comments are great. What I do is I write them in my notebook. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all. I'm really glad to have all of you subscribers.